Hey guys, what's up? Nick here once again, and today we're going to be doing a full unboxing and first impression slash test of the Pint X one wheel. So let's get right into it. Now this is my very first ever one wheel device. I've never owned one of these before. They've been around for quite a while. I think going on like seven years now or something like that, which is kind of wild to think about. But this is one of their newest models. The original Pint was their smallest version of the one wheel. It could hold, I think, up to like 200 pounds, and it was really nimble, easy to get around with, but it also had the shortest amount of range and the least amount of speed slash power. So it wasn't the most successful or like the most sought after version of the one wheel. However, it was the cheapest, so it also was the one that most people kind of flocked to for their first experience, and they would later upgrade to the XR or the now GT. The XR has now been discontinued and essentially, in my opinion, replaced by the Pint X that we have here. The biggest difference between the original Pint and the X is not the size of the device. I believe the size is the exact same. The only real difference is the battery capacity. So it now can travel from 12 to 18 miles on a single charge, which is insane because the original Pint, I think, only went to a max of eight miles. So pretty extensive range there. And also, I think it goes up two extra miles per hour, up to 17 or 18 miles an hour, which is, again, really, really cool. So with that, I'm pretty excited to get it open and test it out on the street. But first, we got to get it out of the box. I also did get the Essentials Bundle from the website, so I will show off those accessories in a minute here. I do want to say I'm, I apologize for the camera angle and that I'm not on screen at the moment. I'm over here. Uh, this is just so you can see the unboxing experience in my office at the moment, and it's pretty heavy, so I didn't want to put it up on a desk. But with that, let's get the box open. So it looks like there's two tabs back here that we can flip open. There we go. And let's just lift up. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but it says life is about to get awesome. Okay. So you should be able to see we have the Pint X right here. I'm just going to grab the lever and lift it out. There we go. Put these cardboard pieces to the side. And there is one little box in here. Must be maybe the charger and something else. So let's look at that first and we'll put the main device to the side. All right. So we have the box here. Really curious to see what this is. By the way, the device itself is heavier than I expected. But that honestly just means it's made out of high quality stuff. So. So we have the owner's manual, pretty neat. It's got pictures, a ton of information, pretty much how to ride it and all that good stuff. Safety information, you name it. Catalog for different products, as well as an application we will be downloading on our phone. So we'll get into all that in a minute. Looks like it did come with some stickers as well, which is pretty cool. So stick those on stuff you want. I'm probably not gonna put it on the board itself, but. <laughs> And then we do have the regular pint charger. Now the essentials bundle actually came with a super charger, which is a lot better than this one. So I'm probably not going to be using this or it will just be my backup essentially. One thing that I've noticed, and I've watched a couple other videos before getting this of people unboxing them. It does for some reason come with like a ton of dust on it. <laughs> like it's sawdust almost or something. I don't know if that's just a, you know, something that they do to kind of show like this is legit. This is from our factory. I don't know, it's kind of funny looking, but it's not used, it's brand new, all that good stuff. And then we do have a, it's like a packet of one wheel business cards. I don't think that's what this is, but what is this? Yeah, it's a ton of just business cards. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. I'm not sure why these are in here, but if you want to go show that, you know, follow them on their social medias and stuff, go for it. Kind of cool. And that is it for in the box. So yeah, it's pretty standard, just the instructions, which we'll keep out of the box because I'm going to be using those in a bit, and the single charger. But again, I'm going to be using the super charger, which is arguably much better, charges twice as fast. So let's get the accessories out of the way. So this is the essentials bundle from their website. We have the order number here. We have a plug, I believe, for the charging port. I don't know why by default this doesn't come with it, like if you were just to buy the vanilla one wheel. But yeah, they give you this little plug. So probably helps water resistance, you know, on the charging area. 
So we will, uh, I guess I can put that in right now. Let's get this out of the way. All right, and the charging port. Yeah, it's down here. So I don't know if you can see this, but it's, it's open to the elements. <laughs> There's nothing guarding it. So that's why the essentials bundle comes with this little plug that essentially goes on there. And there we go. Now it's a little bit more waterproofing, water resistance, I should say. So that is cool. Get the order number out of the way. Now this must be the bumper kit. Now, I think these are just like rubber, yeah, protectors in a way. Comes with some Allen wrenches and some hardware to install them. So just some blue bumpers which are a really nice, pretty blue, I gotta say, because it looks like, yeah, by default, the bumpers that are installed on here are black. So in reality, I could leave these on here for now. I probably will, and these will be my backups. These will be for the future because they're the exact same. They don't add any extra heft or anything. It's just like, hey, if this one gets worn down, you got extra bumpers now and they're a different color. So pretty cool. So I'll definitely keep those for the future. And here's the back bumper. They're relatively the same. One just has the cover for the battery pack and the other one is more uh, open, if you will. Next up is the fender. This is another thing that I'm kind of like, why did this not come with it by default? I mean, yeah, you can drive a one wheel without a fender, like, you know, it'll work. But it's one of those things like without this being on top of the wheel, if you run over any mud or water, it's gonna fly right up into your crotch, basically. So it's just kind of interesting that it doesn't come on by default, but at least we got it in the essentials bundle here. So I will get this installed before I jump onto the road myself. And it does come with the hardware as well, just like the fender kit, or the, uh, sorry, not the fender kit, the uh, bumper kit. So that's good to see. Let me get this plastic off of here. And there we go. So you can get a good look at that fender. Nice bright blue, very pretty. Love the color. So it's got the pint on there. So this is for the original pint, but it does fit the pint X as well. So if you have any, if you already have a pint and you did upgrade to the X, all your accessories that you've had with the old one will work with the X, which is cool. Again, it's the same exact size. So it'd be very weird if the accessories did not fit. We also got some bumpers, looks like. So these just kind of clip onto the sides, I believe. Maybe there is screws involved with this. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe just adhesive, you know, it actually looks like adhesive. So I might put that on just to see what that looks like. But yeah, just some added guardrails, which is cool. And last, but certainly not least, we have the Pint Ultra Charger. So yeah, this is the one everybody says to get. This is the thing that you need if you are gonna be serious about using these guys because this charger, it, it's huge by the way. Like, that's massive compared to the other one. It's literally double the size, which makes sense because it charges this uh, two times quicker. And with that, I mean, you can pretty much plug it in, charge for a couple hours, you're good to go. With the other one, I think it's like zero to 100 charge in like six hours or something, where this is about two and a half hours to three hours. So much better. And this is definitely the one I will be using with my one wheel. So that's all the accessories and that is the one wheel itself. I don't know if I'm gonna film myself installing the fender or anything. I don't think that's gonna be very interesting. So the next time you see me, we'll be out on the street giving it a first try. All right, we are out here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, we kind of just drove out to a spot where we could get some footage of the one wheel here to try it out for the first time. So the first thing we gotta do is turn it on and then use the app on my phone uh, I might have some footage of it on the side here showing you guys how it looks and what you can do inside the app. It's it's pretty intuitive, easy to use. It didn't take very long to set up, maybe like a minute. And it automatically, I don't know how, but it automatically connects to your one wheel. It knows, I guess, just in proximity of which one is yours. It tells you how fast you're going, your distance traveled. You can even set it up to show you the maps on Google Maps of where you've traveled to and from. It shows you how many miles are left on the battery at the certain charge you are on currently. Um, it really just gives you any information that you would ever need through the app to let you know, hey, maybe you should start turning back to go back home kind of thing. Very nice. 
Uh, other than that, it's fully charged. I got it set up here and uh, let's go down here. And we're gonna turn it on. I just, you just click this little button. This little light LED pops up here, letting you know it's initiated and turned on. The app automatically detects within literal seconds that it's connected. And there is different modes you can set it to. I don't know off the, uh, the different modes off the top of my head, but I'll show them on the screen here. And they, I guess it's just depending on your style of uh, movement, on how, like if you wanna be more of a, an aggressive rider, more like free flowing rider, if you don't wanna go to the top speed, cause I think this thing can hit like 18 miles an hour at, at its top speed, stuff like that, pretty cool. So what it says in the app is to initiate, you want to get both feet on the board, lean forward, the motor should kick in and it should stabilize you so that you don't fall forward essentially. I do have auto stop, I think it's called, or easy stop enabled. And what that does is if you just lean backwards to a certain degree, it'll automatically turn the board off, letting you get off easily. If you don't have that on, it actually lets you go backwards. So you can go backwards or forwards if you are more, I don't know, an experienced rider with a one wheel. I'm not, so I have it enabled, so it's easier to get off. So we are on like a, down, a downward incline here. So I might actually switch it to maybe going uphill. So it might be a little bit easier. So let's rotate over here. Here we go, foot planted. Let's see how easy it is to stay stable in this thing. Whoa. All right. It honestly feels a lot like a longboard. That's the best way to describe it. But you can really feel, depending on your weight, if you're shifting forward, you can really pick up speed. Backwards, you slow down. Honestly, for me, this is pretty easy to pick up because I've longboarded for years. I've probably maybe seven years of my life, snowboarded, longboarded the whole nine yards. Let's try to go a little quicker. So yeah, you can really, it, get, it goes really fast, really quick. It's got a lot of acceleration. And the one thing I've noticed though is there, there is a little bit of wobbling because the wheel with this one, the Pint, it's a, it's a smaller wheel compared to the XR and the GT, I believe is like the top tier model. But I wanted more movability. I didn't need all the range the other ones come with because I'm not going to be going very far. But so far, this is pretty nimble. It doesn't, it's not very hard to control. Let's try stopping. Yeah, that wasn't too hard. <laughs> all right, let's try getting back on again. Oh, nope. All right, let's try that again. There we go. I guess you gotta do it slower. If you do it too fast, it won't activate. Probably a safety feature. I'm also really curious to see how the wind affects my voice while I'm riding. Hopefully you guys can hear me and it's not just muffled nothingness. And the coolest thing, the thing about the one wheels is you can go off road with them. You don't have to stay on tarred pavement. They're pretty nimble. Uh, they can go uphill pretty easily as well. I'm literally not feeling any difference from going uphill versus down versus side to side. It all feels the same amount in terms of how much I have to lean, which is really nice. Just trying to get a feel for it. Cause it, when, he, when he start going a certain speed, it definitely wobbles a little bit. And that could just be me not being 1000% like Oh, what's the word? Just not used to it. Comfortable. That was the word. Not 100% comfortable yet. Yep. <laughs> I know that on the box, or not the box, in the instruction manual, so the number one thing you want to do or don't do is jump off left foot first because that will allow the device to keep going forward and thus can cause injury. So the, the best thing to do is if you don't know how to stop is to jump off completely. Just kind of, kind of like a longboard really. Same exact principle. Try one more time here. That was a lot easier.
Another thing too that I'll have to get used to is because I'm on the pint and not like the XR or the GT, the feet or the foot paddles are a little bit shorter. Uh, they're not as wide, so or thinner, I guess. They're not as wide. So my feet kind of hang off on both sides because I have larger feet. So it's something I'm gonna have to get used to in terms of control. I'm gonna try going up on this bank real quick just to see if it'll do it. Go off road a little bit. Oh, almost. I mean, it climbed, it's climbing it. Wow, <laughs> that's such a weird feeling because it feels like you should fall forward based on the incline of that angle of the angle coming down. But the way the machine, the motor inside of it works is it keeps you stable, it keeps you upright. So no matter how much you lean forward, it tries to stop you from face planting. Whoop, there we go. So yeah, stopping is definitely something I gotta get used to. And I think that's what I looked up online, what most people have issues with this thing, is learning how to stop properly without causing injury or having to jump off. So I'm liking it so far. It definitely feels like an electric skateboard, I guess is the best way to describe it. If you've longboarded in your life, if you've snowboarded, you should feel right at home, honestly. That's kind of how it feels. Even though you're on one wheel versus four, I don't really feel much of a difference, which is pretty cool to say. So yeah, I'm liking the one wheel. If you guys want to see any more updates or any future videos of the one wheel, like a, maybe a review in the future after a couple months of use, let me know in the comment section below, and I'll definitely do an update for you guys. So with that, thank you for watching. Make sure to say thank you to Wade, my wife behind the camera there for filming this for me. <laughs> Leave like, share, support, subscribe, so don't miss the next one. We'll always see you in the next one. Peace out.